What up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free. And in this video, we're going to hit up some beam deflection calculations using singularity functions. And what I have here is this simply supported beam ABC with this overhang BC going on. And I have this uniformly distributed load in the mid span of AB and then this concentrated moment at point C here. And what I want to do is use singularity functions to determine slope and deflection equations for the entire length of the beam. The first thing I want to do is calculate reactions. And that typically involves setting up a free body diagram. I'm just going to utilize the drawing that I have here. And I know that this AX equals zero because some of the forces, this is going to tell me that this whole thing is equal to zero. Some of the moments about point A to get the reaction BY. And the resultant of this distributed load is 8 kilonewtons. And that's a distance of 4 meters from point A. And then this concentrated moment is this 5 kilonewton meter. And all this equal to 0. When I substitute and solve, I will get that this By is 4.625 kilonewtons. And then next, I can take moments about point B or I just some forces in the vertical direction to get Ay. And this will tell me that Ay is 3.375 kilonewtons. So hopefully this is the easy stuff. Now the next thing that we want to do is redraw the structure and describe my moment function for the entire length of the beam using singularity functions. Now when I draw this out, you're going to see that I don't draw the support, like a pin support or a roller support. I'm just going to replace that with the forces that are there. So at AY, this was 3.375 kilonewtons. BY, there was 4.625 kilonewtons. And another thing that I want to include here is I want to know which way positive x is. In terms of my coordinate system, this point right here, point A, will represent x equals 0. So this would be where my origin is. And this upward axis represents my deflection. And this V is a symbol I'm going to use for deflection of, of my beam. And, and the other thing I want to know is where the loads start or where they are applied. And so here at A, I would say this point is x equals 0, where the distributed load start. This is x equals 2 meters. Here is 6 meters. This is at x equals 8 meters. And here, this would be x equal to 11 meters. And that's important for me in terms of writing out singularity functions and knowing where we are and when they turn on and off and things like that. So for this problem, I'm going to start with a curvature relationship when I write the moment function out. And as you might recall, you have this you know, d squared v dx squared, the second derivative of the displacement or deflection, is equal to this moment function divided by ei, which represents the curvature. And ei is constant throughout. When I describe this whole beam and the loading in terms of singularity functions, this will be 1 over ei. I have this ay applied at x minus 0. And this, when I describe this concentrated load in terms of moment, I'm going to have a power of 1. And this makes sense, because once this concentrated load becomes active, this units is in four units of kilonewtons, and I got to multiply it by a unit of distance in order to get kilonewton meters. And then the same here for this distributed loading, I would have this minus two kilonewton per meter divided by two, and this will be x minus, and this turns on at x equals two meters, so this is two meters, and as you can imagine, this will be squared if we think about the units again, that, that has to match. Now, once in a singularity function, once we turn on the distributed load, that means it's on for the entire length of the beam and so you have to at six meters you've got to be able to turn it off and the way you're going to turn this off is by superposition so we're going to add on this two kilonewton per meter over two x minus six meters squared and by superposition this will neutralize or turn off this distributed load at this point right there at point b here we have a concentrated reaction or concentrated force going upwards and so this will be plus by times x minus and this is applied at eight meters to the first power and then plus this concentrated moment, which is 5 kilonewton meter, x minus 11 meters to the zero power. Now, the thing to note is that this portion right here, this term right here, has no impact on, on the rest of this because x is always less than or equal to 11. At worst case, at the very end here, you'd have x equals 11, which would be 0 to the zero power. And, you know, we're not a mathematician here. We're not going to debate what the value of 0 to the zero power is. And essentially what it means is that for the moment and shear diagram, this thing has no impact on it. This term has no impact and doesn't have any impact for slope and deflection. So now, once we've described the moment function in terms of singularity functions, we're basically applying the same technique.
technique as a double integration method and integrating twice, integrating once for slope, second integration for the deflection. So for my slope, I have here the slope is equal to dv dx. Sometimes they use the symbol theta. So if I integrate from this term right here or the curvature function, this would be and here I'm just going to write x squared because x minus 0 is just x and that means at 0 this thing is on all the time and so we can just get rid of those brackets and just make it x squared and here the next terms are and I have to add this constant of integration here because of boundary conditions and things that we have to satisfy in this problem which basically means the support conditions and if I integrate again Okay, and those are my slope and deflection equations with the constants. And now the next thing that we got to do is just solve for these constants using boundary conditions. So if I look up here at my structure, if I go back to the original drawing, at x equals 0, I have that the deflection should be 0. And at x equals 8 meters, I should also have that the deflection should be 0. And so those are my two boundary conditions that I can use to solve for the constant. So if I apply this first boundary condition that at x equals 0, v sub 0, the deflection is equal to 0, I'll get that v of 0 is equal to 1 over EI times 0 minus 0 because 0 is not greater than or equal to 2 meters so this singularity function is not active or it's 0 it's still off plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus, zero plus C2 equal to 0 and that just tells me that C2 equals 0 yay that was easy the next boundary condition is that the deflection at 8 meters is also equal to 0 because of the roller support and so now I'm just going to substitute 8 meters in here so V of 8 meters is equal to and here I would have this uh, a y over 6 times 8 meters cubed minus 2 over 24 8 my so the 8 meters here is greater than the 2 meters Therefore, this thing is on, and so I'm going to have 8 minus 2, which is 6 meters, to the fourth. Plus, and then similarly here, because the 8 meters is greater than the 6 meters, this function, the singular function, is quote-unquote on. And this will also be 2 over 24 times 2 meters to the fourth. Plus, now this by over 6 is, you know, 8, it's 8 meters minus 8 meters, so 0 cubed, so that's just 0. Plus, c1 times 8 meters plus 0, because c2 was 0, is equal to 0. And so the EI, we can factor that out. And here, just remember that AY was 3.375 kilonewtons. And when you go through and you solve it out, you'll find that C1 is equal to negative 22.667 kilonewton meters squared. So, and that's it. And so now we just take these and substitute it back into our slope and deflection equations. And this, you know, that'll do it. And there it is. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, right? All right, take it easy. See ya. Yeah.